Hello my scholars, you are welcome to my YouTube channel and my name is Fan. In today's video, we are going to be dealing with measurement of heat energy part 2. Now remember that in our previous video, we dealt with part 1 of it, where we talked about latent heat energy and also heat capacity and other related topics. So today we are going to be dealing with part 2 of measurement of heat energy. So relax, do not go anywhere, I will be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel. So like I said earlier on, today we are going to be dealing with part 2 of measurement of heat energy. So before we begin, let's quickly run through the objective for today's lesson. So at the end of the teaching or at the end of the lesson, students should be able to 1. Distinguish between evaporation and boiling and explain sublimation. 2. Explain the cooling effect of evaporation. 3. Explain the working principles of such devices as I refrigerator, II air conditioner, III pressure cooker. Four, explain the effect of humidity on personal comfort. Five, solve simple problems on relative humidity. So let's move to the next slide as we begin with our lesson. So here we are starting with the uh, simple meaning of evaporation. So evaporation is a change of state from the liquid to the gaseous uh, state and evaporation takes place at all temperatures and from the surface of the liquid. Now, there are some liquids that evaporate easily. Okay, so those liquids are referred to as volatile liquid. A volatile liquid can be high volatile liquid or low volatile liquid. So those ones that evaporate easily are referred to as high volatile liquid. And such examples are ferron, ether, alcohol. So they evaporate easily. Evaporation causes cooling because latent heat is taken from the body to change the liquid to the gaseous state. Uh, the human utilizes the process of evaporation in cooling after exercises. Okay, so now let's move on to talk about the factors affecting the rate of evaporation. And one of them is temperature. Okay, so the rate of evaporation increases as temperature increases. Meaning that if the uh, temperature decreases, then the rate of evaporation also decreases. Then number two, we also have pressure. The rate of evaporation decreases with increase in pressure. Let's move to the next slide. Then number three is area of liquid surface exposed. Area of liquid surface exposed. So the greater the surface area of the liquid exposed, the more rapid will be the evaporation. Then number four is the nature of the liquid. High volatile liquids have high rate of evaporation, while liquids that have low volatility have low rate of evaporation. So when we are talking about high volatile liquid, we are talking about those liquids that have low boiling point. Okay, so uh, liquid with low boiling point evaporize uh, easily. Okay, or they evaporate faster than those with higher boiling point. Then number five, we have wind and dryness of the air. So dryness of the air around the body causes rapid evaporation from the body. Wind blows uh, away liquid vapor and causes rapid evaporation. Then we also have humidity. So humidity has to do with the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. Okay, or if we say humidity of the air, we are simply referring to the amount of water vapor in the air. So the rate of evaporation will reduce if the relative humidity of the environment is high. Okay, meaning that if the amount of um, water vapor in the atmosphere is high, then the rate of evaporation will be low. Okay, but if the amount of water vapor in the air or in the atmosphere is low, then the rate of evaporation will be high. So let's move to the next slide. So on the next slide here, we are going to be discussing about the application of the cooling effect of evaporation and latent heat. So here, basically, we are going to be describing the working principle of uh, the refrigerator. Okay, so your refrigerator consists of some parts, okay, such as the compressor, and the compressor contains a volatile liquid called a uh, refrigerant. And a good example of a refrigerant is ferron. Okay, uh, the refrigerant is contained in the copper pipes which surround the, uh, the freezing chamber of the refrigerator. So as the refrigerant evaporates, it absorbs latent heat of vaporization from the 
surrounding and therefore cools the inside of the refrigerator and its content. So a compressor is also located at the back of the refrigerator and this compressor removes the vapor, compresses it and pumps it into condenser fixed with metal pulling fins that are attached at the back of the refrigerator. So the compressed vapor condenses and gives out the latent heat it absorbed initially to the surrounding by conversion and radiation. So the condensed vapor goes back into the freezing chamber and the process repeats itself again and again. Let's move to the next slide. So here we are just going to um, give a simple um, description of evaporation using the molecular theory. Okay, so according to kinetic theory of matter, uh, liquid as a matter is made up of molecules and the molecules are in a state of uh, constant random motion with certain amount of velocity and possesses kinetic energy. So when the temperature of the molecules is increased, the kinetic energy of the molecule is also increased. This enables the molecules at the surface of the liquid to break away from the uh, intermolecular force of attraction from molecules below and exist as vapor. So the process of the presence of wind sweeps the vapor away and creates room for more vapors. Okay, so now we we'll talk about the cooling effect of evaporation. And these are things that we experience every day in our everyday life. Okay, now a good example is when you store water in a earthen pot, you discover that the water is cooler compared to the one stored in glass bottle. Now the reason for that is that for the um, earthen pot, evaporation takes place through the pores, okay, on the earthen pot, causing the water to cool. So when we say pores, we, are, we simply refer to tiny holes, okay, tiny holes on the uh, surface or on the body of the earthen pot. So evaporation occurs through those pores, causing the water inside the wooden pot, okay, to get or to become cool, okay. So let's move to the next slide to see more. Then another example is uh, before an injection is given, volatile ethyl is rubbed on the skin. Okay, so as the ethyl evaporates, it cools the skin and numbs it so that the pain of injection is not felt much. Then another example again is the human body utilizes the process of evaporation for cooling. Okay, for example, if we become too hot through exercises or due to our hot surrounding, we sweat and evaporation of the sweat from the skin cools us. Okay, and another example is, uh, let's say for example, if a few drops of metallated spirit is placed on the back of one's hand, it feels cool as the spirit evaporates. So these observations demonstrate the cooling effect of evaporation. Okay, whenever a liquid is converted to vapor, okay, heat is usually absorbed from the liquid or anybody in contact with the liquid okay anybody in contact with it this heat is called the latent heat of evaporation which brings about the transformation of the liquid from liquid to vapor okay let's move to the next slide now let's see another application of what i've been talking so far which is application in pressure cooker okay the fact that increased pressure raises the boiling point is put into useful application in the pressure cooker okay the in increased pressure of the trap gas above the liquid raises the boiling of the liquid inside the cooker this provides a high cooking temperature needed to conserve fuel and save time okay so let's talk about the difference between uh, evaporation and boiling point although we've not talked about boiling so on the uh, subsequent slide we talk about boiling but let's just see the difference between evaporation and boiling okay so one of them under boiling boiling does not cause cooling whereas evaporation causes cooling um, boiling occurs in every part of the liquid but evaporation only occurs at the surface of the liquid so this is the much that we can take for the preview of today's video but you can watch the complete video by clicking on the link in the description below and that will take you to my school website there you have to subscribe to enjoy the complete video so in the complete video we also continue with the difference between evaporation and boiling point we also talked about the similarity between evaporation and boiling point we also talk about uh, vapor pressure and we also solve some simple problems on relative humidity and more so i believe the preview you watched you enjoyed it if yes please do not forget to hit the like button 
click on the subscribe button and lastly tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we upload the next videos.